Hi, Richie. <laughs> Hi, Sinclair. You seem awfully well rehearsed today. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> we're just naturally good at this. <laughs> so today we're going to talk about... For the first time... <laughs> Bloodborne Alpha Bosses. Yes, we are. Hmm. Mm. And this is actually kind of good timing, because Lance just released a video about the Snake Ball Boss. Yeah. Yes. So what we're going to do in this episode is we have a list of the boss soul equivalents from the Bloodborne Alpha. So originally, like in the other Souls games, when you killed a boss, it would have dropped the boss's soul and it would have been called like Soul of whatever. Obviously, they don't do that in the finished game, but in the Alpha they did. And even though like a lot of these bosses don't work anymore, we do have a complete list of these boss souls. Um, for reference, they're called Living Livers rather than Boss Souls, but despite being called Livers, they're described as Souls, like on the menu if you look at the description. Why do you think they were called Livers? I don't really know. I think, like, just the, the liver is, like... It may have something to do with, like, medicine or something. There's something about the liver that's, like, a source of energy or something. I don't know. I'm surprised they weren't just hearts. Like, I would have just had, like, the heart off. That makes more sense. No, 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 because heart is too typical. Heart is, like, in every game. But liver... Liver does sound slightly sickly. It sounds more Demon Soulsy. Yeah, and people do eat liver, so... It's a bit, okay. like, weird. Yeah. yeah. So, the liver is an organ only found in vertebrates. Okay, so several of these bosses aren't, aren't vertebrates, so I don't think the Wikipedia article's gonna help. Let me read it, Richie! Okay. The liver, an organ only found in vertebrates, detoxifies various metabolites, synthesizes proteins, and produces biochemicals necessary for digestion. Does that tell us anything? Well, it might be that, like, if they're all corrupted, their livers are fucked. Huh. I don't know. So it's like, because alcohol can dis destroy the liver, right? Yep. I was talking to Mai about it, and she said there's, like, an old um, story about, like, the Monkey King has to get a liver. No, no, not the Monkey King. There's someone who has to get the liver of a monkey. Uh-huh. And, like, it's it's written the same way that this, like, the monkey's liver is written in a weird way that's the same way that this game writes liver. Oh. But I don't I don't know though, because it, it may just be a coincidence. But like that's the only reference I could find to that exact term. And my said yeah, it's in like an old old folktale. So what what's the name of the old folktale? I don't remember. Oh. Richard, did you not know we we're gonna talk about this today? Well, I didn't think we were gonna bring that part up. No, you knew you knew we were gonna talk about Alpha Boss lists of Bloodborne. You knew we were going to yeah, talk about this today. I didn't think today. we were going to talk and about the livers. That's well, just the name the of the liver, item. You started this podcast with they used to be livers. So we're not how 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 what? <laughs> I'm trying to make sense of your logic, and I can't. And you're supposed to be the rational logical of this podcast, as per the comments. <laughs> <sighs> this is going exactly as I suspected it would. Yeah. Because it's like, this, this will be quick, this will be half an hour. We're seven minutes in almost eight, and we have <laughs> successfully mentioned the topic. <laughs> Once. <clears throat> and whose fault is that? I think we're both to blame in a different way. I think... You're both to blame, because you didn't look up the name of the story that is intricate to what we're doing right now. I don't even think it has, a, like, a specific title. It's just, like, a story. What? Oh, my God. Fine. <laughs> we'll just sit here and wait. I will go in 
Yeah, I'm going to go. I will look through the exact conversation I was having with Lance about this or mention the monkey story. Thank you. Search for monkey. Enter. The story is called The Heart of a Monkey. But the way they write Heart of the Monkey is using the same kanji that is used to write Living Liver in Bloodborne. And it's about how the monkey's heart slash liver has medicinal properties. And there's like different versions of the story. Some of them say it's a heart, some of them say it's a liver. What is the story about? Okay, here's the story that you've made me look up. It's 4.43am, okay. we've been talking for 11 minutes, and we haven't started yet. <laughs> story is that okay. there is a a uh, a queen who wants the heart of a monkey slash the liver of a monkey to cure herself because she's sick. She sends a jellyfish out to get the heart slash liver of the monkey for her. It fails. Then they beat the jellyfish's punishment. That's why jellyfish are soft, because they were beaten. <laughs> and? That's the story. That's I'm getting this oh. from a conversation I'm having with Lance. Okay, so now that we know why so, jellyfish are soft. <laughs> no, we don't. We don't know anything. It was a complete waste of time. We know because they've got beaten. Be Did you not pay attention to your own story? failing to capture a monkey. Yeah. Yeah. That's why they're soft. Okay, I don't think that story's entirely factual, though. Were you there? Well, that's a good point. Thank you. Okay. So, Bloodborne. Yeah. Yeah. What we have is a list of the living livers of the different bosses that were in the alpha. Um, some of these, we don't actually have the boss, we just have the liver. And it does, it sort of, some of them have descriptions. They're like the boss soul descriptions in Dark Souls, and they tell you a little bit about the, the boss. So we're going to go through those. Mm -hmm. So the first one is Father Gascoin, who we know. Mm -hmm. He's been there since yeah. the beginning. Doesn't he actually have a description? Uh, Second one is the fresh liver of Father Herbert, and that's described as soul of the church leader. So Father Herbert is, if you've been following like different drafts of the story, the original, uh, not original, like the alpha version of Bloodborne, the idea would be that you'd keep being told to go to the Grand Cathedral and meet Father Herbert. You would get there, Father Herbert wouldn't be there, but the Cleric Beast would. He would beat the Cleric Beast, and the Cleric Beast would drop the liver of Father Herbert. So that would be the clue, like, oh, the cleric beast is Father Herbert. He transformed. Yeah. Uh, which is, sort of raised the question of what that weird little healing church guy is supposed to be. Because we, th we were thinking, well, maybe that's Herbert, but if this is true, then, like, Herbert would never appear as actually Herbert. It would only have to be the beast. Well, no, he could have appeared in, like, a flashback or something. Yeah, we don't know. Mm-hmm. Next one is the, it's called the self-skinned fresh liver, but the description is soul of the blood-starved beast. So that's just the blood-starved beast. Then we've got- Which, him with which kind of makes sense, because the blood-starved beast is- Yeah, it's skinned itself. Like, it's, it's, it's all flayed. Yeah. yeah. It's like the, yeah. the thing that looks like a hood is actually its skin. It's like been cut down the back and it's hanging over its face. Yeah. Yeah. Next one is the Witch of Hemwick. It's just called Hemwick Witch's Liver, and it says Soul of the Eye Collector. So, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, this is, okay, so here we get to an actual cut boss. This is Fresh Liver of Snakeball. Oh, snap. Now, Snakeball is the boss that Lance dug up the other day. It is a gigantic version of those balls of snakes in Forbidden Woods. And it was fought where the Shadows of Yarnum are fought now. So, that has a living liver in this game. In the alpha. So as far back as the alpha, like, that still had, like, data and everything. And, um, yeah, yeah, we don't know what- these don't seem to have done anything, I think you just got stuff for them, I don't know if you could trade them for anything. 
So now we get to a boss that was like, uh, again, stuff that was removed. This is called the the soul. It's basically the soul of the dream demon. So the description of the oh, so sorry, it says the next one is the fresh liver of the dream demon. Mm-hmm. And the description of that is the soul of a lesser demon of death and darkness. So obviously dream dream demon is not in there, but internally in the AI script, Mergo's wet nurse is called lesser demon death and darkness. So the dream demon looks to be the original form of the wet nurse. Like that, that boss was conceived of as this thing called the dream demon. Mm-hmm. And then it, it was sort cool. of shuffled. It was shuffled around, and it became the uh, the final boss. Like later on, interestingly, it is placed in between the Snake Ball and like Bergenworth. Like there's a few bosses in between. So, assuming these are like roughly in the order you encounter them, which seems to be how it is, then like the this boss was something you could have encountered like mid game, like after Amelia, maybe. Okay. Yeah. And, oh, um, by the way, Richie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you mentioned something about the shadows of Yarnum too. Yeah. Okay. So we're thinking about like Mergo's wet nurse is one of those things that doesn't make a great deal of sense if you like start looking closely at it. The thing is, it's it. I've always thought it looks a lot like the shadows of Yarnum. It's got the same like black hood with the sort. Of, it looks like a more ostentatious version of the shadows. Yeah. And. We're talking about, like, we know that Dream Demon was Mergo's wet nurse because they have the same name internally. The name for the Shadows of Yarnum internally is Darkness Brigade, Mm -hmm. which sort of syncs with Lesser Demon of Death and Darkness. So I'm thinking they were actually connected at one point, that, like, the the Shadows of Yarnum were, like, the servants of whatever the Dream Demon thing was. It's also the Spider People internally are called devotee of death and darkness so the spider people the shadows and the wet nurse like at some point were all meant to be linked together but uh, we don't know exactly how the other thing is that the wet nurse looks a lot like the old woman who was replaced by Yosefka yeah and the position of the, the liver like in forbidden woods makes me feel like Maybe like that was a boss in Yosefka's clinic. Like when when you go back now, like you can go back and fight Yosefka mm-hmm. right after Amelia. So I'm wondering yeah. if maybe like that was still a thing you could go back and you could confront the woman who ran whatever the clinic was called at that point, and she would maybe like become this thing, or you would fight her in the dreamlands as this thing because they look very like the the woman who becomes who's replaced by Yosefka. She looks like. Again, kind of like the wet nurse. She's like sort of got the same shawl. She's hunched over. She's covered in these like jewels hanging from it. So, yeah. Yeah, that's one of the things that jumps at you um, right away as you see her in one of Lance's videos. Yeah. I thought the same thing where I'm like, oh my God, it's like a mini wet nurse. Yeah. So, and again, that like raises all kinds of questions about the early like story. Like maybe she. Because she comes across as very kindly in the dialogue that we have, but maybe like maybe that's a front that she's actually like manipulating things. Like maybe she's she's the one that she's responsible for what happens to you or what happens to Lawrence or something. Yeah. Yeah. So after the Dream Demon, we have the fresh liver of Marta Ligarius, who we already know. <laughs> He's interesting because his description is the soul of the king's reaper. But we don't know, looking at it, if that means he is, like, it's King's Reaper, so we don't know if that means he is a Reaper who served the King, or if he is the Reaper of the King, as in he killed the King. Yeah. And I, I kind of wonder if it is, does mean that he killed the King, because he's got, like, a big scythe thing that he could have beheaded someone with, but then that could also apply to you. Yeah. Well, it would make sense with the current story that he killed the king. Yeah, like, as as um, nonsensical as Ligarius kind of is, the fact that he has a scythe and all the women in Kanehurst are decapitated does yeah. fit. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. But weirdly, like, he is also, like, there were so many different versions of Ligarius, so we don't know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I guess, like, if you read it that way, he killed the King of Canehurst mm-hmm. in this, like, he's very overtly, like, decapitated them. So here's where things get really weird. The next one, uh, this is, we're getting to Bergenworth now. Fresh liver of Mikolash's cast off shell. And the description reads Soul of the University Professor. Mm. So this is when Willem was a boss. Uh, originally, like we we sort of talked about, this. Santa has shown off some some uh, animations and stuff, and I think Lance has mentioned it a bit. But like Willem was a boss, pretty like until like I think past QA testing, like he went for a while, and he would um, he would teleport, sort of floating around in his chair. The the staff he has, he would be able to shoot sort of beams with it. And apparently, according to Lance, although he's never managed to get it properly working, he would be able to summon, like, eyeballs that would sort of, like, float around him kind of like um, like Rom spiders do. But the interesting thing is the way he's called Mikolash's cast-off shell. Because we're not entirely sure what that means, and, like, doesn't seem to be like any other way of reading it it's just the cast off shell so i'm wondering if like maybe the idea is that um mikolash mikolash and maybe willem were the same person like he was called he was called mikolash into the cast off shell because he's like projected himself into the the dreamlands or something Mm -hmm. and left his body behind because it doesn't actually say like it doesn't mention willem at any point it just says like um, yeah, Mikolash. Like he does, it just says the university professor. It doesn't say what his name is. So he may have been called Mikolash. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So following that, interestingly, is the living liver of Rom the Vacuous Spider, who was also Ooh. the boss of Bergenworth. Mm-hmm. Now, this ties into something that, like, Lance is looking at and like we've sort of half known about for a while which is that there were two Bergenworth maps there was the regular Bergenworth map and then there was a map that was literally called upside down Bergenworth yeah and it is what it sounds like it is just Bergenworth rotated 180 degrees it's like you just would walk on the ceilings basically um (laughs) and like we've sort of known about it for a while because there's references to it and we were like really upside down but it turns out yeah they apparently did did toy with the idea of like there'd be two different bergenworths there'd be above ground bergenworth and then literally like upside down bergenworth under it like a mirror image of it that would be under the ground and like, like my thi- a mirror image in the lake that's my theory my theory is that cuz the you, everything's reflected in the lake. So my theory is, like, maybe you would jump off into the lake and you'd see Bergenworth reflected in the lake and then you'd just literally jump in the reflection. Mm-hmm. And you'd be in upside, like an upside-down reflected Bergenworth. And this ties in with something that... It's a cut line of Mikolash, where when he's talking about, like, the vacuous Rom and stuff, he says, like, Rom, the downside-up fool. Yeah. So yeah. if you have, like... If this is upside down Bergenworth, then that fits with Rom being the boss because that would make Rom like the downside up fool. Yeah. As in like Rom is the vacuous spider who is upside down. So it looks like at this version, at this whenever this list was compiled, like you would go, Willem is the boss, Willem slash Mikolash's body is the boss of Bergenworth, you beat that, then you go to upside down Bergenworth and the boss is Rom. That would have been pretty cool. Yeah. So, like, I guess, like, Lance will probably have a Birkenworth video out when he finishes uh, mm-hmm. dynamining it. So, Rom is followed by, it just says, the incomplete false god's living liver. Is that now, the amygdala? Well, here's the thing. The amygdala is called false god, but there is a separate false god-like item later on. Okay. So I think incomplete false god is the one reborn. Oh yeah. Basically, just by process of elimination, because the Rom reborn doesn't show up anywhere else. 
and um, like it's it's living liver is in between Rom and who I think is Mikolash. So it makes sense because that is the boss you fight in between Rom and Mikolash. Mm-hmm. And also the the um, when reborn internally, its AI script calls it half baked devil. <laughs> so yeah. like half baked makes it seem like incomplete. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I don't know what the deal with the one reborn was initially, but here it looks like they were maybe trying to make a great one or something like that. Mm-hmm. Whereas in the final game, it doesn't really have much of a story. It's just like the Thumerians showed up and brought a bunch of body parts back to life. And making a great one sounds also very Demon Soulsy. Yeah, it does actually. Yeah, same way as like the the old monk is doing. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, and like we we know because like there's a whole arena specifically designed for it that One Reborn was was always like where it was. They couldn't have shifted it around. Okay. Because, uh, like, it's very specifically designed to be fought in that arena. It wouldn't work anywhere else. It's got to have the two tiers and everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So then we've got... It's just called Fresh Liver of the Apostle. And I think that is probably Mikolash, or whoever became Mikolash. Because it's just, Why? like, it's just it's just after the One Reborn, but before, like, the end game stuff. Okay. So I think it's Apostle as in, like, the Apostle of... Maybe cause or the apostle of like the healing church or something. What's an apostle in terms of Bloodborne? I don't know because they they keep playing around with different yeah. like terminology. Also, like some of these don't have descriptions, and the fresh liver of the apostle does not have a description, so we don't know what it would have said. That also reminds me of Berserk. Yeah, yeah, hmm. and like I suspect you are always supposed to fight someone kind of like Mikolash in that area because it's designed to be like run around. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I don't know what this character was. It was always meant to be um, Mikolash because you think you're like. I mean, talk about like Mikolash's cast off shell. Maybe like Mikolash is in the nightmare, but. You think it would actually say like Mikolash's fresh liver then, but it doesn't. It just says apostle. Yeah. Yeah. And, like there's so many different versions of, of that character that like at some point it's like Lawrence, the Lawrence character and the Mikolash character are the same guy. It's just like it's just like the head of the healing church goes into the nightmare. There's not like a division between the healing church and Mensis. They're just the same organization. So it has been a lot of changes. What about the brain of Mansus? Could it be an apostle? It might be, but like, um, yeah. Because hmm. again, like that, that has to have always been where it is because the environment's designed around it. But I don't know if, if it would be a boss. Maybe like, I don't know, maybe, maybe it was like a puzzle boss and you had to get to the top and like, it was like the dragon god or something. Mm-hmm. You had to just like pull a lever to kill it. Yeah. Yeah. Is that all? No, there's more. Okay. Okay. So following the Apostles Fresh Liver is just called Soul of the False God. That's the amygdala. Yeah, and it specifically says soul. It doesn't say, like, liver. So I guess it doesn't have a liver because it's, like, a (laughs) great one spider thing. So it's just, like, Soul of the False God. And that doesn't have a description, but Amygdala is called False God internally. So this also looks like it is back from when the Nightmare Frontier like just led directly to the Nightmare of Mensis. So you would have like fought Mikolash, gone from Mikolash to the Nightmare Frontier. The boss of Nightmare Frontier would have been Amygdala, and then past Amygdala, you would have got to the Nightmare of Mensis. Mm-hmm. Although interestingly, like that means, uh, yeah, maybe that's not how it worked because the fresh liver of the apostles before Amygdala. So maybe Amygdala was for... Maybe Amygdala is optional at this point, I don't know. But, like, there is there is another version of the progression where it just goes Mikolash, Nightmare Frontier, Nightmare of Mensis, as opposed to Nightmare of Mensis. Nightmare Frontier being optional. But it does look like it's optional here just on the basis of where everything is. So after that, you've got Saint Laura's liver, and the description of that is soul of the beast saint. So Saint Laura is the old name for Vicar Amelia. 
Mm-hmm. So the, the character who is now Vicar Amelia originally was a character called St. Laura. And she wouldn't have been fought in the Grand Cathedral because that's where you would have fought the Cleric Beast. We're thinking she would have been fought. There's a trailer that shows her off in the room where you fight the Witch of Hemway. So we're kind of thinking maybe she was designed for that room. And they mm-hmm. moved her to the cathedral later. But, like, it's also possible that maybe she just reappeared in the cathedral in the same way, like, if you go back to the cathedral later, the Bloody Crow is there. Mm-hmm. Mm. But you have all these nightmare bosses, then in the middle of it is St. Laura. So I'm thinking she might have been, like, kind of like a Briatus, like a high level end game boss that's just sort of off in a side area. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So following, this is where it gets confusing, following St. Laura is the liver of Cos. Ooh. And Cos is described as the fallen child of the moon. Aww. And at this point in, like, development, the character who we are calling Cos now was Ibriatus. Right. Right. This is, it's very confusing. So, yeah, um, I don't know what the deal was. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, it's still the the thing Mikolash is calling to, so yeah, yeah, and it's confusing. But we do have an episode on this. I yeah. think it's episode six. Let me double check. Where we talk about how Cause and the Briatus, and I yeah, think even the Moon uh, Presence were sort of switched around. The same, yeah, yeah. Yeah, their names all get shuffled, yeah. So this cause thing, like, that's Ibriatus, the boss that we know as Ibriatus. And, um, it, like, is, is, is important because there's a bunch of, like, the arcane items in, it, in this version are called, like, Anger of Cause and, like, Augur of Cause. So cause is super important and at this point. And that's why when you fight Ibriatus, she does a call beyond at you. Because it originally a call beyond was called like the anger of cause, so the idea is they're like drawing on cause's energy to use that. So that's why she can do the same attack. Yeah. So yeah, cause would have been like almost certainly a story boss, not a an optional boss, is what I'm getting at. Like very important character. Yeah. So then, this is where I, I lose track of what the fuck is going on at all. Because we get okay. the, f- the living liver of Ibriatus' inheritor. Now, there's no actual living liver of Ibriatus, just Ibriatus' inheritor. And the weird second version of the Moon Presence that has been found in, like, chalices and stuff, is like internally its AI script is called Inherit the Nightmare. So it's something to do with that, but like it also might be German. It's very, very odd. Hmm. Hmm. Um, and that's followed by a no, night that doesn't have a description. So then it's followed by something called Fresh Liver of the Moon's Messenger. Mm-hmm. Which, yeah, um, and that's described again as soul of the nightmare inheritor. So we have like two completely different references to the inheritor of the nightmare. Mm-hmm. So I'm wondering if like the liver of Ibriatus' inheritor is German, and then the moon's messenger is Ibriatus meaning the Moon Presence. Because at this point, the Moon Presence is called Ibriatus. Right. Yeah. And, like, the Fresh Liver of the Moon's Messenger is the last... It's the last liver on the list, so there's nothing after this. So it does seem like it should be the final boss. Yeah. Yeah, and, like, again, it's called Inherit the Nightmare, and this is described as the soul of the Nightmare's Inheritor. So I'm guessing, like, when you talk about Ibritus as Inheritor, they mean German. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you probably 
notice that like there's some bosses that aren't on this list that are in the game. What does that mean? Well, the first one is the Celestial Emissary is not on this list at all. Mm-hmm. And like looking at that boss fight, it's a mob boss where one of them gets really big, which is sort <laughs> of a it's sort of a like here's the model we had. Uh, we made a boss out of it, kind of like feel to it, like, yeah. and like pe- people sort of call that boss like a gag boss, like it doesn't really count, and like um, it's people plow through it so quickly that I was able to find a move it doesn't normally do because everyone kills it so fast that. <laughs> what was the move? It has it does like a buff. It can sort of, it does like a praying gesture, and then when it finishes the pray gesture, like the other celestials get a buff from its attack from that, like their eyes oh. glow. Yeah, and like almost no one had seen it because they just kill it before it does it because it's such a pushover. And like <laughs> as if you've been following like what Lance is doing, um, he's found that there was like a lift from Lumen Flower Gardens where you fight the emissary it would have gone somewhere else. So almost certainly like. After they realized that that room didn't do anything, I guess they just put the emissary in it. Like, it, it had a different function originally, and that's kind of why the boss is a bit of a wet blanket. <laughs> um, there's also no, no Parl. Parl? Yeah. Wouldn't they be in the dungeon at this point? Well, th- this something? is the thing, because I've been playing the game unpatched on 1.0. And if you go into the lore and chalices, the character that's normally called so to to explain, Paul is a boss in Yahagol. If you go, he's called Dark Beast Paul. If you go into the lore and chalice, you can fight another version of that's the same model, but it's just called Lore and Dark Beast. So like, there's Lore and Dark Beast. Paul is an individual Dark Beast. In 1.0, if you do that. The Dark Beast you fight at the bottom of the chalice is also called Dark Beast Pal. It's not called Lauren Dark Beast. So I'm wondering if, like, based on this, and there's no chalice bosses on this list. Based on this, if maybe the um maybe Pal wasn't always supposed to be where Pal is. And maybe Pal is just a chalice dungeon boss that they sort of put on the surface. That's why he doesn't have a living liver. And that's why the, the name is the same in um, the Chalice Dungeon and above ground, and then they patched it out later on. Yeah. Anything else? Not really. <laughs> so we did it all? It's not a very long list, honestly. Oh, well, that, that went well. Yeah, I'm surprised because it started off terribly. You know what I think it is, Rich? I figured it out. Is it that it's it's five thirteen a.m. and I'm too tired to? No, go on. I think part of it is I'm also tired. Yeah. And another part is that we recorded three podcasts, but in between we talked. Yep. So those parts were not recorded. Yep. <laughs> Usually those conversations sort of drip into the podcasts uh-huh. because we just stop, record, stop, record, stop, record, you know? Yep. So I, I think that's the trick. If we um if we if we want like clean podcasts, yeah. we just gotta take a little break in between. Okay. Yeah. But do the do the listeners want that? Because I I notice we get a lot of comments that are like, "No, I I like it when you're just rambling." <laughs> but I'm sure I'm gonna get comments for this when it's like, "Finally, you're getting it together, sin." But they're gonna be directed specifically at me, as per usual, as if no one else is here. <laughs> yeah. I clapped. Congratulations, everyone. Yeah, congratulations, everyone. <laughs> so yeah, this was cool. It was interesting. Yeah, it's not interesting. 
Hopefully, uh, Lance finds the the uh, upside down dignity city soon. Yeah. I got my PhD from upside down dignity city <laughs> medical college. <laughs> yeah. Also, did you see that I waited like literally 40 minutes to get my snack? I was being so respectful today. It's a new record. Yeah. <sighs> my boyfriend was also respectful because he's making noise in the background now because he's doing electronic stuff. Yeah. So he only like started doing it when he's like, okay, they're coming to a close. That's very nice. Yeah. Corvo. Well, Corvo was not respectful. Corvo made quite a lot of noise. Yeah, but during this one, I think it was okay. Yeah. <gasps> oh! What is Ingrid doing? I, I uncrossed my legs. She's very unhappy. Uh oh, is she on your legs? Yeah, she sits on my lap when I'm recording things. But then if I move at all, she gets very unhappy. Oh, that is so cute. She should be she should be on a cam next time. We should have like a Corvo and the Ingrid cam. What if they saw each other and started hissing? <laughs> yeah. She hissed at the cats in Darasine. Why? Because they make a meowing noise if you try to move past them. Oh no. <sighs> mm. Are we wait? Are, do we have to do the outro? Is anyone still listening? Okay, Richie. Thank you so much for this informative podcast. Don't thank me. Thank our community of dedicated data miners who we will put in the description. Also, all this information is on the Bloodborne Wiki. Yes. Could you tell us the link to the Bloodborne Wiki? Well, get your pencils and paper out. It's bloodborne-wiki.com. Thank you. Yeah. Also, like, I wrote up the page with this on the Bloodborne Wiki, so this podcast has just been me doing like an audiobook version of something I wrote five months ago. <laughs> awesome. Patreon.com slash Sinclair Law. <laughs> well, people keep asking for you to read an audiobook, so this is like our path toward that. I'll read an audiobook, but it'll be like, like the technical manual for a piece of equipment. I can do an audiobook of the PS headset manual. <laughs>